Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and we've got ourselves another repair video here today. So what we see in front of me is a Nintendo Game Boy. Um, this is one of the original style Game Boys, came out in the late 80s, manufactured through the early 90s. Um, I bought this on eBay quite a long time ago. I opened this up semi-recently in my more recent Mail Day video and uh, Finally going to get around to taking a look at this, see what's wrong with it, see if there's something we can fix here. So um, first things first, uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you get uh, notifications every time I upload new content. Um, trying to get uh, new videos coming every week, so um, hopefully I'll have lots of content for you coming in a couple weeks. So um, moving on, let's test this thing. So I'm going to use my Pokemon Yellow, which I repaired just a week ago. Two weeks ago, I think, actually. So just to show you that the game actually does work, no problem. We'll plug it into my Game Boy Advance. And as you can see, it looks like it's good to go. So, Pokemon into the Game Boy. Um, just looking at the battery contacts in here. They actually look pretty good. A little bit of grime in that in here, but otherwise it's very clean. Um, this will probably get a bit of a cleanup, but um, I really don't think these battery terminals are going to be the issue. It's pretty common that I'll find when I uh, open up old Game Boys like this that maybe have sat for years and years with batteries in them. They're just, all the batteries have leaked and all the battery terminals are coated. They can't get a contact or anything. So that's often why you get no power issues on a Game Boy. But let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got power and right away we can see we've got a bad display. Let's check the contrast wheel here. So you see these big lines down the middle. When I have the contrast, let's turn this down. When I have the contrast cranked all the way up, this whole screen should be dark. And you're seeing these um, these light bars on the side, the one vertical line there. Um, not uncommon at all here. There's a little ribbon connector at the bottom here that uh, feeds into this board. And we're going to have to reflow that to get this working. But otherwise, let's uh, let's get some good contrast there. So we can see it works. Let's test out the buttons. Let's see what this guy's got on his game. Oh, nothing. That's the one I repaired earlier. So A button works. B button works. Start. So, looks like it's more or less functional. We just got a bad display. So let's open this up. Let's uh, show you guys how to repair this. So what we're going to need to open up this console is a tri-wing screwdriver. So I've got my precision screwdriver set here. And tri-wing would be, where are we? Probably this guy. Yep, and it's a fit. So this one, when I unscrewed it, I don't know if we can see here. There's just like all these crusties that came out of it. It's pretty gross. Um, so I think I'm gonna wash this shell for sure. The barcode on the back here, probably going to get damaged in the wash um, but as you can see it's already very damaged already not too concerned about that but um, all those flakes that are coming up um, that's not so much just dust it's usually like grease dead skin cells dirt grime just general gross stuff that gets in there since this was a handheld it comes into contact with your hands um, just like a controller, when you open up a controller and you see those crusties caked into the, uh, the seams between the shell parts, same thing there. Okay, so opening this up, you want to be careful because there are two parts to the board and they're connected by a ribbon connector. So when I open it, 
you'll see that there's that ribbon at the top. Don't just go ripping the whole thing off because you risk damaging that ribbon cable. So fold it down, grab it in the middle, and just like that. Okay, so one of these posts has fallen off. Where did that come from? So there's a couple damaged posts here, actually. This guy there. Where did you come from? Oh, right here, I guess. So when I get this board out, I think I'm going to try and see if we can't reattach these. Just to make them a little more durable. So I'm going to store all the little broken bits. Um, so what we're going to be working on for the most part for the screen is this side. Um, so I'm going to take this board out. The inside screws here are just uh, smaller Phillips screwdrivers bits. So swap out the tri-wing for your Phillips screwdriver. That's too small. That's a good fit. And this is... S to one pH. That's how that's labeled on my precision set here. So all these screws are just going to come off. I'll skip ahead here. All right, so we should be able to just lift this board up. Sometimes it does get a little bit adhered down. There we go. Okay, so board is up. We can set the shell aside. Um, so, at one point, I do want to actually clean this shell. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to make this video really focus on how to repair the screen. But um, as you can see, there's kind of gross stuff in the speaker vents. These buttons are going to want to be cleaned up. Um, but that will be a job for another video. So I'm going to set my shell parts over to the side there. Um, I will need this, though, for testing. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to get set up here first. All right, so give this a little once over um, where these, see these carbon pads here? It is a good idea, even if this isn't the point of the video, I do wanna clean these up before I put it back together, just to make sure that we're getting a good connection from the buttons from year to come. But it wasn't an issue in testing, so I'm not concerned about it not working. It's more just preventative cleaning and maintenance here. So let's uh, get this set up, how we're gonna need it for testing. So gonna get this side here, power off, throw some batteries in. And then we're gonna reinstall this ribbon cable, just like so. There you go. So you want it to be in flat, even pressure, so we are connected. I'm going to turn this over and have it look something like this. I'm going to be focused my work here just right on where this, uh, this ribbon cable there is, which connects to the screen. Um, but this will turn it on and off, so I should be able to turn it on. And as you can see, the screen will show up. For this purpose, I'm going to turn the contrast wheel all the way up. So it looks like that. So I have the big black square. Let's turn this off for a minute. Big black square in the middle. I can very clearly see what works and what doesn't. Next step is right here, right underneath the screen, there's a small little adhesive um, piece, which I'm going to need to get up. So what I'm going to want is some pliers, or not pliers, sorry, tweezers. Some very small tweezers. I should be able to just lift this up.
perfect, just like that. Um, if you can, try and keep this somewhere that you'll be able to reuse it. Okay, so now I'm going to get my soldering iron turned on. It'll take a minute to get all set up, so I'll be back in a second. All right, so I've got my soldering iron all hooked up, turned on. It's up to about 660 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to turn the power on, bring up this screen again. So how this works, right on this ribbon cable, each of these contacts feeds a line of the display. So if the connection is poor, it will actually stop feeding data. That's why it's white instead of dark. If you push down on it, sometimes it will... See how some of those are changing? So what I'm going to be trying to do is with my soldering iron, I'm just going to be heating up the ribbon cable, moving my way through problem areas until this whole thing turns black. So I'm just going to start there. And you see that as I work away from it, um, we're starting to get some of those lines filled in. So I'm going to keep coming back, going over areas that I've been. It might lose its connection for a second, and then once it starts cooling, you will get your data feed again. So, as you can see, much better already. Um, you just need to keep coming through wherever you're seeing problems until they all turn dark. Okay, that side's looking a lot better. I'm going to repeat the same steps over here. Keep your uh, soldering iron moving. You don't want a single area to get too hot. You want to just try and heat up this whole area with even heat. I have it at 660, so it's not too hot. It's not so hot it's going to melt this connector. It is leaving a little bit of a mark, but that is okay. Mm-hmm. Let's let that relax for a bit, see how this looks. Okay, so try and keep an eye as these lines are flickering, which one the furthest to the side is, so you know that you've got a little bit more to go.
Okay. Looks like we are super close. There's a couple lines there that just are a little faint and they keep flickering off. So I'm not sold that it's 100% ready, but I'm going to let this cool and we'll start at it again in a minute. You see they're still flickering there. Or maybe it's good. No, nope, there's a little line right there still, which we need to fix. Yeah, so as you can see, when I put pressure down here, they still flicker. I put pressure down here, we're good. So this one... Still needs a little bit of work. Sometimes it might help to apply some pressure just at the bottom with your finger. Still not ideal. I'm going to remove this little screw here. A smaller Phillips bit. Almost there. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So let's put that soldering iron away. I'm going to give this um, about 20 seconds just to continue cooling down before I start screwing it back on the bottom there. Um, so at first glance, this looks good. It looks like we're perfect here. Um, you don't know for sure until you actually put it all together just to make sure. Sometimes applying pressure to parts of this can cause that connection to be lost again. So you need to put it all together before you know for sure. Um, but ideally, this is going to be good to go. So let's screw this screw back in here. Again, remember, whenever you're screwing into plastic, turn it backwards until you feel a little click like that, and then you can screw it in forwards. That way you're avoiding, there we go, you're avoiding cross-threading the plastic. So let's turn this off. Let's Disconnect that ribbon again. There you go. It's just much easier to work on one half at a time. Okay, so let's get this here. Oh yeah, said I was going to clean those contacts. So I got to grab my isopropyl alcohol. Just be one moment. Okay, so all I'll use here, 
have my Q-tip. I have the end coated in just 99% isopropyl alcohol. Just going to go over any of these black pads here just to make sure that there's no gunk, grime, any type of buildup there. You'll note that the end does get black and that is okay. Um, that comes from these pads, so you don't have to do it until it's no longer coming up black because it probably will continually do that. But you just want to get any loose stuff up out there. If there's any um, corrosion to it, you might need to do something about that before it's ready to go back together. But um, for our purposes, this is good to go. So I'm going to feel that. That is cool. I'm going to try and put this little adhesive strip back in here. I'm not sure exactly how much good this does anymore. And I don't know, but you might even be able to get replacement adhesive strips for these things. Taking care to try not to touch the screen. You just want to avoid getting your fingerprints on it. This part is honestly easier said than done. It's not going on. It's lost its adhesive. But it's not a big deal. There is this little rubber strip here that will, that does it here. Um, this just helps to keep it stuck to the actual display itself. Um, ideally, you could get a replacement strip for that, but it's not entirely necessary. So let's get this put in, line up the speaker. There's little tabs on the speaker that have to fit nicely into place. Then line up all of these Something fell out of whack here. There we go. Make sure these pads are in place. There we go. Then line up the holes to the posts. It should all sit nicely into place. And then start screwing the board back in. You'll note that right here, there's a do not screw icon. Do not put a screw into there. But otherwise, the holes with circles around them are going to be where you need to install a screw. So I'm going to use my slightly larger Phillips screwdriver bit and install those Phillips screws. Sometimes it helps to actually hold it off your workstation just so that the buttons aren't pushing up on the board for your first couple anyways. That way you can get a nice solid connection. I like to work kind of crisscrossing, kind of like you're installing lug nuts on a wheel rather than going in a circle. That way you just don't wind up with something at the end here that's you know, maybe not sitting right and then you're stressing the board or stressing the plastic to get it to go into place. Okay, so I've got the board screwed in here. Um, as I mentioned before, there are some posts that need repairing. I'm going to do that as part of another video where I actually kind of really restore this back to as good condition as I can. But for the sake of showing you how to fix the screen, this is almost done. So get that ribbon connector back in. Make sure that the power switch node and fell out. Um, I've been guilty of that a couple times where you put it all together and then you realize, oh crap, power switch isn't in. Yep. And then the tri-wing screws. So switch back to the tri-wing bit. And again, because some of the posts are a little broken, I'm making absolute certainty that I'm not over-screwing these in. Um, I want it to hold into place. I don't want to make them even more broken. So let's just get them in there to the point that it holds it together and I'm happy with that for now.
And if you feel or hear it start to crack, just back off. Again, always remember the old reverse method. Click, then screw in. it off so I'm going to save that screw okay so we've got her back together I don't know if this can pick up through the mic but hear a little bit of movement when I push the screen so the screen is starting to actually lose its adhesive it, it's about ready to come off um, so part of when I do this restoration is I'm going to get new adhesive I'm actually probably going to replace this lens altogether. They make nice um, tempered glass replacement lenses for these that just looks way better than the plastic ones that are in here. But again, job for another day. Batteries in, Pokemon in. Let's put contrast somewhere. Oh, let's leave it there. Okay, so the darkness is filling the screen. And it looks like we're good. So um, again, pretty easy way to fix screen issues with the original Game Boy. There you go, let's turn that down. So that is a pretty common way to find these. Those These screens tend to fail like that pretty often. And like you saw, um, it's not that difficult to repair. Um, you just need a soldering iron and a little bit of willingness to get in here and poke around yourself. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for another one in the coming future where I'm going to actually um, restore this a little bit better. We're going to replace the lens on there, give this a good cleanup, um, really make this look nice. But um, until then, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell notification so you get all the immediate notifications when I upload new content. Um, I'm going to try and do that as weekly as I can. So um, hopefully we'll have a lot more videos you'll be able to see from me in the coming weeks. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. We'll see you next video.